Hi, I'm Alex Kolaskov, commercial photographer, founder of footage.com. Today I want to talk about Canon and Sony, and Nikon and Sony, and all uh, digital uh, SLR, DSLR world against mirrorless world. You know, it was so many questions why uh, we are selling all our Canon gear uh, and moving to Sony, actually. It was a Sony that uh, we moved. And uh, this video, uh, I'm going to answer why, because it was so many times I've been asked this question. So, guys, I'm a studio photographer, okay? I'll try to be short. First, I'll talk about technical a little bit, then I'll to do more emotional, or maybe completely emotional, because this is an emotional stuff for me. You know, I've been with Canon for many, many years, over 10 years. I've been shooting in studio, I've been using it outside, I was happy, it was a great camera. Uh, but, you know, in studio at some point I moved to medium format, okay? I got my first uh, Hasselblad uh, and uh, loved that camera. I didn't care how large it is, how slow out of focus, and uh, how, you know, I saw performance. For studio, it's completely different requirements for the camera comparing to outside, okay? Uh, especially if you work uh, like I do with still life, with products. I don't care about ISO performance, I always shoot native ISO, 50 or with Canon it was 100 ISO in the studio. I don't care about autofocus and its performance and how many you know, dots, uh, I mean, uh, focusing points camera has because I was always using manual focus for still life photography. I didn't care about weight and size because the camera was always mounted on a big stand, studio stand which weighs you know, 200 pounds itself. I didn't care about, uh, well, many things that I do care when I take in the camera outside, okay? The outside, it's, it's completely different requirements. I need relatively li um, lightweight camera. I need great ISO performance because I shoot at low light and I want to have sharp images. I want to make sure that out of focus is good. I want to make sure that um, a camera sets exposure and kind of uh, takes picture and uh, do this uh, all automated stuff, which I never do in the studio. Outside I care because I use it all the time. And guys, Canon is great, but do you remember history? If you get, go back uh, 200 years ago when we invented photography, you know, it was cameras like this. Of course, this is... Um, uh, Graflex, uh, much more modern camera, but the idea was simple. It was a lens, right? And it was basically a film which you put behind, okay? That was the first camera. And it was a range finder, right? It was a little thing where you look through and you can see a relatively similar picture that your lens supposed to see, okay? Of course, it's kind of, we it didn't work for macro, but nobody used it for macro. And then, it was a big issue when you want to replace lens, you need to replace the viewfinder, right? It, so, it was invented single reflex lens, okay? Single lens reflex camera, SLR, where basically inside the camera, human engineering genius put a mirror, right? In the mirror, in order to see through the lens. So you can replace your lens and still see through your finder, through that mirror, what lens is seen, set a focus, do all that kind of stuff. And then when, when you click a shutter, that mirror flips, right? And let light to get exposure on the film, right? It was like this. And it was the main reason why we had SLR cameras. Now, with digital. Can you tell me why do we need mirror there? Yeah, you can tell, oh, Alex, I, it's so cool to see through the lens. What's cool to see through the lens if you can see it on the monitor, if you can see through the sensor? It's, I mean, I, it's a tradition, but come on, guys, it was, you remember, steam machines, you remember steam locomotives, right? They were great. They were so powerful comparing to horses or whatever was before. And they've been lasting for over 100 years, right? And um, I think last train uh, steam uh, lo locomotive 
uh, was running at 1960 or something. It was a great technology, but where they are now, it's the same as that SLRs, with DSLRs. I understand then when we first got a digital sensor, it was no technology to display, you know, live view, all that kind of stuff. But right now, if little camera, which cost $500, can have live view, can, can do exposure uh, simulation, meaning that I will see what I'm getting exactly on my screen. Not like I'm looking through the lens, clicking, and just in a second later, I find that, oh, well, that's not what I mean. I need to adjust something and then click again and check again. You know, guys, what I really love Canon, Nikon, but what they try to do, it more like uh, trying to improve steam machine. You know, uh, in history, if you look at uh, steam uh, trains, you will see that uh, at the end of that era, it was steam trains with um, uh, turbine, turbine electrical uh, generator and electrical motor. And it was really sophisticated machines with tons of, I don't know, 10,000 horsepower. That years it was just great. But now, these days, it's not gonna work. We don't need that thing inside the camera. That mirror which flips, it adds lots of mechanical thing. Because this camera almost has no mechanics. There is nothing to break in it. If, you, if I drop it, yeah, it may break. But it's electronic. And electronic, it's much easier to make it unbreakable when you drop something, right? There is almost nothing moves, a little bit. Just a little bit, comparing to uh, big cameras. And I don't know. Uh, tradition shouldn't stop a progress. And you know, this live view screen, it's so cool. It's flip. Canon, guys, why you cannot do flip screen on the camera? When I take camera outside, I want to shoot my daughter. I, they, they little, I'm shooting from waistline. I'm looking like this and clicking, and it's awesome. If I want to shoot a landscape from really below, I can put my camera really low without laying on the ground and see and, and shoot everything. What's going on with that little flip screen which you can't uh, do? You know, a little thing, but it's like, basically, when you sell your stuff, when you sell all the lenses, which cost like $15,000 uh, originally, when you sell it for less than half a price, it hurts business. And I didn't want to do this, but I didn't have a choice. Uh, there is no Canon camera that I can buy. That uh, 5D DS, what they did, they got old camera and they put 50 megapixel sensor in it. Guys, it's improving steam machine. It's why I still need that flip thing and the, you know, the camera is shaking, uh, all that kind of stuff, which was invented 200 years ago because it was a film and we need to see through the lens in order to set focus and all that kind of stuff. Right now, why are we doing this? And you see, I, I really wish that Canon and Nikon will understand and kind of stop inventing, stop uh, improving steam machine and start making something. I really want, I, I really don't want that Sony will dominate the market. Because, you know, domination is never ends good. It always hurts uh, at some point end user, con consumer, us photographers. Because if it will be only one uh, brand, uh, you know, on the market, it will degrade quality and it, it won't be good. We want competition. We, we want healthy competition. And Canon and Nikon has it all, except they need to turn a switch in the CEO heads. I don't know, guys, what is going on. You, you create a new camera and, you know, on, on Sony, I can transfer my images from camera to the phone and post it on Facebook or whatever in less than 30 seconds. Come on, it's... Right now, it's the 21st century. 
And being able to post things fast online is a crucial if you are a photographer, if you are anyone, if you are an entrepreneur. I mean, it just, who wants to be behind? Ken and I can do we want to be behind? Guys, why, what are you doing? Hasselblad, Mamiya, all the phase one, you know, all these big uh, medium, fam uh, medium format camera brands. Yeah, they have one day they will switch, I hope. Or, or they will die. They will switch to uh, mirrorless technology. They will pull up the thing from the camera because it's not needed. But they have quite different audience and quite different requirements for those cameras. Like I said, when you shoot in studio, you don't care about many, many things that I do care when I shoot it outside with my camera, when I travel with my camera. So that's kind of emotional response. But Really, we need a competition, we need the good cameras, we need a good selection, we need a choice. And Canon did need, did, didn't leave me a choice, unfortunately. Now we're selling all those lenses, we're buying new lenses for Sony. Lenses, it's not, probably Canon has better lenses, at least some of them. They, they're beautiful lenses. But I don't need 50 megapixel in old body, without flip screen, without all the things that I have in this little camera. So this is it. A little bit emotional, uh, but this is what comes from my heart. And uh, this is what I really feel about uh, all the situation. We need a choice, guys. We need a choice. We need competition. We need Canon and Nikon. And I hope they will hear me and hear you uh, when you kind of vote with your payments, with your pocket, you know, with your wallet, uh, buying Sony and other mirrorless. Uh, and they will be able to switch to modern cameras before they will die. Really, that's how I see it. Okay, subscribe to the channel. More videos coming soon. And that was Alex Koloskov. Bye, guys.